In this video, I'll go over the microtomography import aspect of the Puma software. Since Puma is fundamentally a code for X-ray microtomography analysis, the import of images is, is obviously a key component of that. I'll assume that you've already watched the video on preparing the 3D TIFF files using Fiji. This will have included the uh, filtering that's required and how to convert the images into an 8-bit TIFF. Um, they can be imported into Puma as either an 8-bit TIFF or a 16-bit TIFF. However, for the uh, image display here to work properly, it's recommended that you use an 8-bit TIFF. The microtomography can be loaded by clicking the Import 3D TIFF image, and we'll use the uh, example tomography provided with the software. Uh, you can use the file browser, or you can use um, you can drag directly onto the screen the three-dimensional image. From here, you'll see the 2D TIFF slices shown on the right. You can slide the window up and down and change which slice that you're looking at. Uh, next here you'll see the subdomain extraction. For this case, we'll extract a 512 cubed sample, which means we're going to use 100 to 611. Uh, the reason that this is 611 and not 612 is because this uses the C++ indexing, meaning that um, the indexing starts at zero, and since this is inclusive, 100 to 611 is actually 512. Next is to add the voxel length in micrometers, which in this case is 0.65, and then import the domain. Now the slightly cropped version should appear on the right. Uh, if you want to see the entire version again, you can click the revert crop button, which will show the full size as well as the sample that was extracted. What's also shown down here now is a grayscale histogram, which shows the frequency of the grayscales at each of these points. Um, this is used for the simple thresholding-based segmentation that's used in Puma. Uh, more advanced segmentation techniques can be used in external softwares and then uh, imported into Puma as just binary or uh, simple 0, 1, 2, 3, etc. Um, that way they can be thresholded in that, in that way. However, in this case, we'll use the, the simple um, thresholding based segmentation technique. Since this is a two-phase material, meaning that there is only carbon fiber and air, there should be two peaks on the, uh, on the PDF, and that is in fact what we see. The first peak here, which is the largest peak, represents the void phase, and then this smaller peak, which is very spread out, represents the carbon fiber. An appropriate Threshold is typically based on an inflection point between the two, uh, but really relies heavily on the user to be able to um, use his or her own visual pattern recognition to compare to the threshold selected. So in this case, an appropriate value is approximately 90. When that is applied, you can uh, see that the image has been changed into binary, and you can revert back and forth using the revert threshold button. Uh, when reverting this button back and forth, give the software about a second to refresh before clicking it again so that it, it runs smoothly. This can be used to check to make sure that the segmentation was appropriate. Um, as you can see, if the segmentation was chosen too high, the binary image is not a, an accurate representation of what we would expect the proper thresholding to be. Similarly, if it was taken to be too low, you end up with a lot of uh, what we call junk in the domain, which are artifacts that are considered to be material that should not be there. So as I mentioned, in this case, an appropriate threshold value is about 90. Now the cropped image can be saved by clicking File, Save, TIFF Stack, Original, and this will save the three-dimensional TIFF which can then be used for other purposes. And this concludes the microtomography import aspect of the software. Um, as mentioned earlier, this is detailed in um, a little bit more in depth in the documentation. So if there are any questions, please reference the Puma documentation file.